Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Tong Shu Liu. I'm the PhD candidate in Polytechnic of Montreal. Um, today I'm going to talk about the uh, UHPC application uh, on shear strengthening of the concrete beams using the UHPC lateral layers. My presentation is about uh, is including five parts. Uh, I will first introduce the background information and our research objectives. And uh, I will mainly talk about the experimental program and their results and discussion. And uh, hopefully we will have some useful conclusions for the future research. <coughs> now the background information mainly uh, is about the current status of existing concrete bridges, civil research, uh, have indicated that uh, a substantial amount of bridges have were structurally deficient or showed advanced deterioration, which in urgent need of replacement or rehabilitations. The, re the bridges and need rehabilitations mainly from the two reasons. First, uh, they may have structural deteriorations, either from the environmental uh, attack like a freeze or cycles, carbonation, penetration, or they have over design load, and, or they are um, have no damage, they just want to improve the, the utilization, like uh, higher permiss permissible loads or additional traffic lines. So the bridges need to be repaired. So our research is focusing on using the UHPC to repair and strengthening the concrete bridges. It has many advantages, uh, like the higher efficiency, they can improve the structural capacities without significantly increasing the section. And they also have the low possibility of denomination because they have higher adherence and bond strengths between the UHPC and concrete. And they are better cracking control. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> They have also better cracking control, so their surface slide can be extended. So uh, now the existing, uh, they have several research gaps on the uh, research on the structural behavior of UHPC strands and beams. Most of, of the research are rectangular beams now. The informations are needed for the T-beams, which is popular in uh, concrete bridges. And the shear behavior, especially the failure mode of lateral and new jacket strengthening of the beams were poorly examined. Our, uh, we first have some initial, initial parametric study that identifies several parameters that may have an impact on the shear behavior of UHPC strengthening beams, like the interface debonding, like the rebars and stirrups, the steel anchors and the interface, or the length and thickness of the repair. So our research objectives is to invest, investigate the shear behavior of T-beams repaired with the lateral UHPC layers. We will first investigate the effect of main parameters, and then the most more importantly is identify the failure modes, which will provide us information to provide the numerical models to design the UHPC strength and T-beams. Now this presentation we will for, uh, mainly talk about the experimental program. We have uh, casted uh, four beams. One is reference beam, reference beam. They have all three meters long. The left side is full of uh, stirrups, which uh, prevent them from shear failure. So the main sh shear span is on the right, which will have shear failure. We have uh, three strands and beams, uh, uh, 15 millimeters UHPC layer in lateral, 25 millimeters and uh, 15 millimeters with anchors. The anchor arrang uh, will, uh, an arrangement is uh, put along the shear span. So the, we started at Bidong Jinihan and fini finished at the BPDR at the company. We first uh, built a formwork 
the we use the retarder painting to help us obtain the interface in the concrete. So we first cast the concrete and then use the water pressure wash to have the exposed aggregate interface. And then we cast the UHBC and using the inclined bucket. And you can see the UHPC, although it's self-compacting, it's uh, flowed uh, uh, slowly compared with concrete. And, and then after that, we do the material characterizations. The concrete is a normal strength concrete, uh, which uh, has less than uh, 30 megapascal, but the UHPC with 3% of fibers, they have uh, over 150 megapascal. And they have also uh, high uh, tensile strengths uh, obtained by the dog bone test. And then in order to be sure about the in interface property, we have the uh, interface characterizations. First, we do the direct shear test um, with and without anchors. These are the curves. Sorry. These are the curves. We can see the shear strength, stress, and sleep curves uh, of this uh, direct tension test. And uh, the spacements without anchors are three to four megapascal in shear strength, while they are four and four to five megapascal in spaceman with anchors. And we can see the surface of the broken spaceman that uh, most of the cracking are happen on the concrete side, normal concrete side. This is also similar in the direct tension test of the interface. We can, we can see that uh, the tensile stress, vertical displacement curves, that uh, mm, both spacemen with and without anchors will show the tensile strengths around 1.5 to 2.5, but the spacemen with anchors will sustain the load more uh, at a large displacement. We can also see the surface of the spacemen that only one spaceman uh, failed in UHBC part, while others are normally, they are failed in normal concrete site, which indicate that the interface uh, connection is good. And then we did the beam test. We have a three point bending test. The steel beams are used to transfer the accurate load to the beam, make it more uniformly. And we have uh, load cells, LVDTs, and strain gauges in both uh, steel rebars and concrete to monitor their um, behaviors. We also have build a region of uh, using the digital image correlation technology. We first put the black dot lines and use the high speed cameras to capture the every uh, deformations of every point in the shear span. So then we can see the results. First is a low deflection curves of the four beams. We can see the considerable ripple strengthening effect is achieved in both uh, shear capacity and beam stiffness. There are five stage and can be identified. The first is elastic stage. In this stage, the beam will have no crack. And then the bending crack happens first. And then the shear crack will happen. Um, and the beam stiffness will be decreased. And uh, near to the peak, the shear failure will happen. The stiffness will soon uh, go down and the load will go to uh, the load that is similar to the reference beam after failure. So we can see that the decrease of uh, stiffness is happening all the beams after the shear crack, but and this decrease was mitigated by the UHBC behavior because they have a, a, a strengthened them in a better behavior. D 
detailly we can see their detailed uh, strength and effect. The increase in share loads. Uh, in share cracking loads, it has at least uh, 64% above uh, past increase. And for the share ultimate load, it have at least 100%. But it's not proportional to the UHPC layer thickness. The first 25 millimeters of UHPC layer offered a very large strengthening effect, while the increase to 15 millimeters layers have brought a limited supplementary improvement. So maybe we can use the and these based on these results to optimize our UHPC layer thickness. And also the shear stiffness in the shear stiffness. A stiffness before the shear crack and the stiffness after the shear crack, we have a, a 8 to 90 percent at least uh, increase, and the improvement increase is approximately proportional to the layer thickness. And um, moreover, we can also see the anchors will only have very limited improvement on both the shear capacity and shear stiffness. And then we can, uh, secondly, we can see the load strain curves. We can, uh, this will help us identify the beam failure mode. We can see the reference control beam is controlled by a shear failure. And the two beams show the similar strain relations, the stirrups yield, while the rebars in the longitudinal rebars are not yield so which indicates it's a shear failure. While well, beams with anchors, they are yielding the green lines, they are yielding in both the stirrups and the longitudinal rebar, so it indicates a bending shear failure. So with the help of the DIC images, we can see detailly the difference between the uh, beam with 25 millimeters of UHPC layer and the beam with 50 millimeters of UHPC layer. So both the beams will have bending cracks first and then bending shear cracks uh, inclined, but the TSW25 will fail at uh, last the web shear failure, which happens later, while the TSW50 beam will finally fail by bending shear crack. So these, uh, these videos has shown the principal tensile strength distributions in the lateral spaces. So we can see from here, these four figures are all the uh, um, peak load of all the strengths and all the beams. They all show the bending shear behavior with web shear cracks and bending shear cracks. They have a, uh, some fightings between each other in TSW25. We can see that failing shear with limited effect on the bending shear cracks, but on other two beams, they are both failing bending shear cracks, but as uh, we can see in the screen, the W50 is a uh, failing shear, while the beam with anchors are failing bending shear, it's different. So in order um, to see detailly what's happened in the beam um, inside, inside the UHPC in the normal strength concrete, we have conducted the sectional cut after the testing. We can see they were saw cut at the section crossing the main shear cracks. And we can see clearly that they are shear failure, they have shear cracks across the section. But we also found that they have some near interface cracking. Some places are at the interface cracking that may have an influence on the beam shear behavior. So now we can get some useful conclusions. The UHPC lateral layers are very efficient to strengthen the concrete beams. We can see substantial capacity and stiffness increase. And the failure type, we can identify it. Uh, that beams without anchors led to a shear failure, 
while the 15 mm split anchors led to a bending shear failure, which is more, uh, which is a better failure mode, but it will, uh, it will be achieved by the 15 mm split anchors only. And for the configuration, we can see that the UHPC repair with 25 mm layer was the most optimal. The anchors can help further increase the strengthening effect, but only with a very limited extent. So this may, which, this may indicate that the bond of the UHPC on concrete anchors is sufficient to obtain an adequate performance of the strengthened beams. So in the future, we will use these uh, experimental results to validate the models uh, by reproducing the beam test results. And maybe we can conduct more extensive parameter studies like their thickness, length, anchor arrangement, and other parameters. Well, we also will, uh, will propose the, the, uh, some empirical model that consider the, uh, not only the contribution of the concrete, the stirrups, the UHPC, but also the effect of the interface between the um, between the concrete and UHPC. So we will introduce the interface models to explain why their sh uh, shear uh, capacity increase is like this. So thank you. These uh, are all my presentations. <laughs>